What is going on guys? Andy Gabs back for another video and we have something very cool to look at uh, and if you came here from Brian or Noah you probably are gonna know where I am and what I'm gonna show you but today we are at Universal Rocks. Um, so this is the place where Brian is having all of his custom enclosures built for the Reptarium and he was just here like last week or maybe two weeks ago uh, and he was showing a bunch of his stuff being built but I kind of wanted to give you guys a tour of all of Universal Rocks. So we're gonna go inside and check out this area first. This is kind of like a little grotto um, where they show off some jacuzzis and stuff like that. So we're gonna go inside, check that out and then go around all of Universal Rocks. Right when you come in, you come into this big like atrium area where they have all kinds of different stuff and everything that you see in here that looks real, looks natural, all of this is all fake. It's all like either molded off of real trees, but it's like a, a very hard plasticky material and it has crazy details. You can see in this one, there's even like a heart, a heart carved in right there that says, it looks like SP and uh, JV maybe? But yeah, so this is just like their demo area and basically they're trying to, or they're not trying, they're building jacuzzis right now. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to walk on this. I don't know, it seems sturdy. So this is like the new thing that they're doing is building all naturalistic jacuzzis with waterfalls on them. And you can see this one has like a big grotto, but all the jacuzzis obviously look, in my opinion, way better than, you know, regular blue pool liner jacuzzis or anything like that. But yeah, that's what this whole entire area is, is just like a display area. And then over here at the back of this area, um, which I thought was pretty cool, there's actually an iguana and a unicorn right there. But there's a little iguana right here, or not little, he's actually pretty big. But they have him kind of all covered up right now just because it's kind of cold in here, so just to keep a little bit of his heat in. And then evidently there's two more iguanas too that we'll check out when we get over to the other building. But yeah, I just wanted to start out and show you guys this little like display area that's still under construction. Um, but for now, let's go check out what Universal Rocks actually does. Now we're essentially in the other side of Universal Rocks. This is the first little warehouse you walk into. It kind of almost looks like a little break room. And uh, we come through the door with the middle finger. I'll make sure to leave it closed. And then we come into this room. So this is where they keep um, a lot of their, it's like the actual molds for what they make all of the rocks and whatnot out of. So it's all of these different molds that you see everywhere. So basically what they do, I'm also sick. Um, I'm just getting over the flu, so breathing is not the easiest thing for me right now. So if I sound out of breath or sound sick, that's why. So basically they take this right here, this is the mold itself, not with this, then they spray it with latex a whole bunch of times, and that's what this, la that's what this is right here, it's latex. So they pull, they spray this a whole bunch of times, then they peel that latex mold off, and then that's what they use to actually spray inside of, and that's how they make the actual like stones and whatnot that you guys see, which we'll get to in a little bit. So over here is where I believe they're actually spraying the hard stuff or the spray foam. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which one, but Stu, the, the mastermind, is actually over there working on one of Brian's cages right now. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can go over there and maybe film him uh, working on that for just a second. Okay, sorry, I was talking to Stuart the whole time and he was kind of explaining a bunch of stuff and he actually invited me to come back to learn how to do all of this so that the next time I build a cage, I can be, um, we'll say, more informed than I was last time, as you guys saw in my cage build video. Um, but okay, going, moving on. So this is one of the big backgrounds. Um, it's essentially just like that. They cover it with the latex again, just like they do those rock bolts that I showed you guys. Then they peel off that latex, and it essentially looks like this. It just kind of feels like a really, really heavy balloon. Um, and then they spray that with the foam, and it turns into that. So that one that you saw all covered up in the white is that exact thing, but twice the size. Um, and while we're right here, I guess I can show you guys. There's an update for Brian's uh, turtle pond that's gonna go divide the new Reptarium from the old Reptarium. So they basically just wanted to fill it with water uh, just to make sure that it was, you know, watertight. So 
So I'm assuming this is just going to be an area where the turtles can like come out and then some underwater structure and I'm assuming there's going to be a couple more little areas that come up and then like little areas right here and I don't think it'll be filled up quite this much because obviously the turtles will just be able to come out. But yeah, there's a little update on the turtle pond and if you guys wanted an update on the alligator enclosure that I'm not even sure if Brian showed, uh, I don't think I can get super close to it right now because they're like letting it harden. That's what Stuart was working on when I first walked by um, but I'll show you guys what it looks like from a distance. That's essentially it right there. You can kind of see where the waterfall is going to come down and then all around it is going to be a big water feature as well So that's what Stuart is working on right now. It's just kind of Structuring out with all the foam and figuring out how it's gonna work and then these gentlemen over here Are actually spraying one of these big huge uh, Rocks or backgrounds or something and they're actually filling it with that foam that you guys see so that rock would probably weigh you know Oh, I have no idea. 50,000 pounds maybe? Maybe less, I don't know. But it's probably going to weigh a couple hundred pounds when it's done. But it's going to look just as good as it would if you were walking through the Arizona mountains and you found it. Um, but okay, now we are going to move in to the next warehouse because this place is never ending and go check out how they actually cut the cages and uh, some really cool foam stuff that we uh, we saw earlier. So one other quick little thing while we're walking into the next warehouse, which is also, this is the next warehouse from the warehouse we were just in and now we're about to go into another warehouse. Um, these are for one of Brian's tanks. Uh, I believe it's gonna be for the rock iguanas. Um, you can tell how big they are. I'm six feet tall and uh, it towers over me. But uh, the next room, I'm pretty sure it has the actual cages in it and then like I said, how to cut the cages and some really cool foam stuff. Okay, so I misspoke again. There was the first warehouse and then there was that warehouse and now this is the warehouse with all the cages in it. Um, so we're now three warehouses deep uh, and we still have more to go. But so here's a couple of the cages uh, that are being kind of worked on and fixtured out. Obviously none of these are completely done. They're still gonna have like that moss look put into them But you can see it's just this hard coating that's super thin and then just this foam which is like it's Literally rock solid. I think this one's probably six by four by four. Maybe six by five by four No, six by four by four. I'd say That one's a little bit shorter, but it's got that cool piece of driftwood in there That'll be cool for whatever's going in there that kind of reminds me of uh, Bella's current cage. This is one of the cages that you can see all the way through. Uh, glass is a little bit dirty right now, obviously. It's in a warehouse. This one's super cool again, one of the ones that you can see through. So these will all be in the center aisle. That one's pretty cool, just a lot of open floor space. I really like this one with uh, all the different ledging and tiering and everything. That's super cool. I don't remember what's gonna go in there, but still gonna be awesome. This one is definitely my favorite. I love, I think it's gonna be a corner enclosure just based on how it's shaped because it looks like it'll place right into a corner. I mean, in my opinion, a really cool like monitor, a smaller monitor species, a tree monitor or something could go in there. I don't know, or maybe a couple smaller tree monitors, some greens and blues. And then this one's cool too, just because it has a cornered glass piece with a really cool look. And um, one thing that I was gonna show you guys with this, I think this is the coolest addition that I've seen Stu make with, uh, he started adding like the moss to make it look mossy and just more naturalistic aside from like the browns, grays, and blacks. But he went through, I'm not 100% sure what that is, like what the, the, what makes it look wet, but it's not. It's not wet at all. It's like a hard resin or something like that. But it just looks cool with the green because it looks like it's running water that's been running for you know however long and it's gotten mossy. It just it looks amazing. This is the cage that I was talking about where those two giant trees are going to go into. This is huge. I can't even touch the top. So I'm assuming it's maybe 10 feet tall, 10 feet wide three feet deep, something like that. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna be for um, rock iguanas or Cubans or something like that. But this cage is absolutely massive and this is gonna be right outside the uh, the window. So you'll see this from the street and whatnot, which is definitely gonna draw people in. Uh, it looks fucking amazing. Now we're finally going into the next warehouse that has where they cut out all of the different pieces for the enclosures as well as a whole bunch of foam stuff. The pieces that I'm sure you guys have seen Brian working on is how the cages kind of interlace together. Um, it's kind of just like putting puzzle pieces together. It makes them more rigid, easier to cut, and it saves a lot of space for when they're cutting. Then you just go back through with screws. Sorry about the background noise too. I mean, this is an active warehouse and they are actively doing uh, warehouse things. 
So this is the big machine that they go through and they actually cut all of those pieces out with. So they go through, they create that little puzzle piece and then just right next to it, just like maybe a centimeter away, they do the other puzzle piece. So it just saves a lot of space. Then they go through over there and you can actually see that gentleman carrying one. They put them together, screw them together. Uh, and that's what makes all of the different parts for the cage. Those are all, I believe, lids for Brian's cages, I would assume, or maybe not Brian's, maybe other people's cages, but lids nonetheless. And then we come over here, and this is where they cut all different kinds of foam. The foam can then be sprayed with that hard coat stuff if it needs to be, or some of the stuff like what he's working on now. Um, I'll show you guys. They're little 2020 table toppers for a, uh, a company that's doing like an event and they wanted them in the center of the table. They're just gonna be painted though because they're not quite big enough to be coated with that hard coat. Basically, they just use this big huge machine right here and they cut out these cool little 2020 things. Uh, and it's just gonna be a cool little centerpiece. And the uh, mastermind behind the foam is currently working on making a couple more of those little 2020 things. But he showed me something really cool that he made that I wanna show you guys real quick too. He made this, which is a, um, a big dragon statue for Cook Children's Hospital. Um, I believe his name is Peak, something, something like that. But he's pretty dang big. And he's actually coated with that hard coat stuff, so he'll last forever. You know what I mean? It's, they'll last outside through hail, wind, rain, anything that you can think of. So it's just crazy what they can all do with foam and then how it's hard coated so it'll last realistically longer than anything else would, right? Because it has that polyurea, that super hard coating on it. Um, but yeah, it was super cool. I sat here and talked to him for like 30 minutes earlier about everything that they can do with the foam from like little projects, big projects, um, things like this. I'm assuming this is a base for like a pillar maybe. And then he has actual pillars that I saw right over here. You can see, so I mean, if that was coated with that polyurea and then painted gray, I, you wouldn't even know that that wasn't a cement, po a cement post, right? It, they look perfect. And then all the way down to things as intricate as that, you guys can see that's, you know, super, super thin. And it's all cut with this hot wire machine right here. Most of it's cut with that, and then I'm sure they touch it up by hand. Um, but yeah, everything they do with foam is pretty amazing. Okay, well, I cannot keep track of the uh, warehouses that we are in. So this is actually where we started out. So we're back in the beginning to where they have the cool jacuzzi displays and all this different kind of stuff, that big iguana. Uh, but I'll show you guys a couple other things in here. So uh, they got Nemo and a shark up there. We got giraffes, peacocks, there's a koala, uh, this big unicorn that's right here. Um, I'm not sure what exactly these are made out of. They're probably cast out of real animals, so this is probably, you know, this was a unicorn at one point. Then there's, you know, crocodiles right here, little caimans, uh, some sort of monitor, lizard, I'm not sure what kind that is. There's an iguana. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I'm sorry that I wasn't super high energy throughout the whole video. You know, I was pretty, I was pretty sick when I was there, so I was trying to be as good as I could, but honestly, it was, it was just kind of rough for me to uh, maintain the high energy level that I think I usually have. But uh, super cool videos coming up. I pranked Eric, um, did some cool stuff with Noah, show you guys a ton of animals at BHB, the Reptarium. Um, me and Brian do some really cool stuff over on his vlog. Definitely a great time, but I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, because if you don't hit it, you won't get notified every time I post, and I've got some banger videos coming out within the next couple weeks, and let's just say, uh, right over there, I might have a new snake. So, you're definitely gonna wanna turn that bell on. Thank you guys again. Peace.